Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I'm super excited to bring you my interview with Aaron Haley from Post Oak Customs out of Texas. If you follow anybody in the barbecue world, eventually in your feed, you will see one of his products, his uh, cutting boards or his slicer or tumbler or a logo or something that they've done. So I wanted to chat with him. I also i am working on these lists and I have a list of cutting boards that barbecue joints use. And a lot of people mentioned Post Oak Customs and also Brett from Brett's Backyard Barbecue in Rockdale, Texas said everyone in Central Texas <laughs> uses Aaron at Post Oak Customs. So I had to talk to him, find out I want to interview people in all the fa different facets of the barbecue world. And Aaron's a big part of it. And it's a great story. I don't want to get too into it, but we talk about everything that they do, all the different ways that you can get a hold of them. If you're watching on YouTube at the beginning, there's a montage of a bunch of different items that they've done and they are killer. They're amazing. So reach out to them, postocustoms.com. Aaron, thank you so much for taking the time. And the Kevin's Barbecue Joints podcast and YouTube show is brought to you by Centex Smokers. They're out of Luling, Texas. The best way to get a hold of them is on Instagram at Centex underscore smokers that's c-e-n-t-e-x underscore smokers that way you could see everything that they do give michael a follow also give him a dm get a quote he's about four to five months right now which is unheard of for the quality and what he can do for you and it's not just offsets it's you can do everything he's been welding since he was a child so uh, he, he really really knows what he's doing again that's centex smokers out of luling texas and we're also brought to you by treaty oak distilling that's treatyoakdistilling.com, or they have a physical location in Dripping Springs, Texas. Great people, great stuff, Treaty Oak Distilling. And if you're digging these, please subscribe. I guess you're supposed to ask people to subscribe, but if you're liking these, subscribe and hit the bell notification, because I do a lot of these and I want to make sure that they uh, stay in your feed and that way you get a chance to see them. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com, links to all my podcasts, YouTube stuff, tons of lists, a bunch of crazy stuff all within the barbecue world but the end stay safe thank you for listening to these have a great week how are you doing i'm great how are you i'm, I'm doing well it's a you know a weird time but it's a a good time and a weird time but it's a, i'm i'm really excited to speak with you because i've seen your name all over the place i've seen your company post oak Cust customs and so i wanted to you know chat and get people a chance to to learn a little bit more about what you do and what you're all about have you uh always lived in texas uh i've lived in texas since i was a kid my dad uh is a texan and we moved around uh when i was younger because he was in the forest service but we uh moved back when i was uh younger and so i've lived kind of in the central texas area ever since is it interesting that, you, that your dad worked for the forest service and you now work with wood is that is there a connection there or a reason that... you know i i probably haven't thought of that but yeah my dad actually has uh, been a woodworker his whole life and uh, actually built uh, houses until he retired and uh, so I just have always been kind of handy and it's a you know working with your hands no matter uh, what it is whether it's barbecue or wood or gardening or whatever else it's just always kind of a good feeling oh it's incredibly satisfying and and I and I've appreciated craftsmanship more and more as I've gotten older and realized that it, how special that is and when I've, I've watched, you know, I spend plenty of time watching uh, YouTube videos on woodworkers and forgers. And it's just such an interesting, it's, a, it's an interesting craft. And I think it's, it's dying out because a lot of people have automation. And I'm sure you have things that are automated in your shop too. Well, then did you, what was your path then? Did you, like, in what, in what city did you grow up in? I grew up out in uh, Marble Falls, out uh, in the actual sort of hill country area. Okay. And so out on the lakes and moved to, to Austin after I graduated. Wanted to kind of uh, quote get to the big city and uh, and get out of that small town and the, the same as you sort of realize as you get older about craftsmanship you realize the same thing about small towns and uh, kind of where you came from but mm -hmm. at the time I was ready to kind of move move on to somewhere else. Isn't that funny how everyone wants to get out of their small town and not everyone does but a lot of people end up coming back to their small town or a small town similar to their small town. Yeah, it definitely, definitely happens. Uh, kind of the the older you get, you see more of your friends kind of heading back to those areas that they came from. What was your path? Was your path woodworking from the beginning? No, uh, not at all. I'm really uh, a tech guy. I uh, worked in tech, was involved in tech, and about um, about ten years ago, I got really excited about the the maker craft uh, movement and uh, got involved in that and actually 
uh, ran an event uh, for South by Southwest called South by Southwest Create. Oh. And so it was a, a hands-on uh, sort of maker tech event that kind of merged those things together, uh, merged my interest in tech with my interest in making. That's killer. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun and uh, a real blast. One of the things that came out of that was that I ended up buying a CNC laser just happened to buy a CC laser. You know, it was really cool, and uh, I kept telling my wife that I wanted to buy one, and she kept telling me I was crazy. One day, I just decided to put a business plan together and showed her, you know, that it was sort of a, a good idea. started doing that on the side, and it was fun. It was interesting. Can I, can I, can I go back a second? For the people sure. that might not know what that is, can you explain what that is? Oh, yeah, a- absolutely. So type of uh, printer, essentially, that allows you to, to etch things onto certain different material. And so it's primarily used in industrial and uh, other types of things like that to, to make different products. I, I mean, it's ridiculous the number of things. The, the guy that did my initial training from the company we bought it from said kind of once you see – uh, what this does, he said, you can't not notice it everywhere you go. And it's true. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, we did a, a, a Skype birthday call last night. And, um, you know, the cake topper that was uh, on my friend's cake uh, had been purchased from Etsy and was a laser cut, you know, little thing. <laughs> so there's a lot of different things you can do with it. And that's kind of really how that got started. It's a, a little bit different about kind of how I got into uh, the post of barbecue world. Started. So were you doing that for friends or for projects like where people giving you the little things to do is that or what your business plan what was your business plan would you call it a cnc router is that something it's a a cnc laser yeah uh so we it just the business plan was essentially just to um you know take on um as much work as uh was needed to essentially pay for the expenditures um it's pretty it's a pretty healthy investment depending on what you purchase and so that was the, the, the Faustian bargain with my wife was that I would attempt to, to pay for itself and, and not have it cost us any money. And so uh, I did that out of my, my garage for uh, a few years until we kind of pivoted and, and uh, changed direction. But yeah, that was the original plan. Were people coming to you, or how did they find you? Did you just have a, like a Facebook page, or what was ten years ago? We had a we had website and, and a availability for folks to contact us, but a lot of it was just you know friends and acquaintances through other projects that I was working on, and uh, you know we found definitely found plenty of business to kind of keep us busy uh, and and pay for uh, the kind of make that business plan happen. And then how did you jump into the barbecue world, the woodworking world? Were you doing other woodworking too on the side? Uh, yeah, I d- definitely do different projects and work on different um, different things. And I, uh, you know, in the meantime, I have always been, uh, I, I came from a, a service industry background when I was younger uh, and thought, you know, that, I, that that's what I wanted to do back then before I realized uh, how much work was involved in that. And uh, that's where it, when I pivoted into the tech world, and so I was involved in the, the barbecue community already, uh, both as, as a fan and as a, a backyard cook and as uh, okay. involved in, in different competitions and events. And uh, I handle um, a lot of the sort of cooking detail and whatnot for uh, a few different uh, folks that I uh, do some work with. And so when I was sort of tr- having a, a moment, it's it's been about five years ago now, I was sort of having a moment about not really sure what I wanted to do um, with that laser anymore. I had uh, stopped running this event for South by Southwest and I just didn't have that sort of same passion anymore. And uh, it was actually a really good friend of mine who's also been on uh, the podcast, Jess Priles, convinced me to marry the uh, those two different things that I really had passions about. Oh, that's a, oh, that's the oh, I didn't creativity okay. wow. and then the CNC uh, world with barbecue, and so that's kind of where Post Oak was born. Wow, she was she's been very supportive of a lot of people, and vice versa. And wow, that's I didn't know that that was the connection. I'm glad that. I'm glad I didn't know because that's cool. That's a cool little thing. So then did she say that, did she connect you with different people or was it just 
you should you should do this and then it just started to grow um that's a, that's a really great question I thought about that before i uh before i came well, up that's okay um, i should have yeah. thought i should have sent you a list of questions if i was a professional at this sure i, I think <laughs> i'm sure we probably uh made something for her i was making stuff for myself uh already and for a few other folks so it's not like I wasn't uh, involved. And so I kind of was already involved in uh, the barbecue community. You know what? So what really happened first was uh, we, <laughs> we made a we made a bunch of uh, keepsakes. I can't remember even what they all were. Leather keychains and uh, maybe some Yeti cups. And um, I'm not sure what else for one of the very first uh, carnivores balls. Okay. Uh, the first here in the States. And so I met her uh, doing that event uh, when she was still coming back and forth. And at some point I just said, I, you know, I think I want to get out of this uh, crazy uh, laser thing. It's really taking time away from, from other things that I want to do. It's taking time away from barbecue events and, and other things like that. And she said, well, do you really want to, you know, stop? And I said, well, not, not really, but I, I just, you know, I want to do something different. She said, well, you know, stop. She just told me to stop and think about what I really uh, enjoyed doing. And that's kind of how that came together. Kind of like her, kind of how she just realized, like not just realized, but she realized what was most sure. important to her and what was, she was most passionate about. And she, you know, went head first into it and look, look where she is now. Sure. Yeah. Before we start, uh, before we started the, the actual podcast, you and I were talking about uh, taking some time to kind of reflect and, and yeah. uh, think, think things through and, and sort of get a better handle uh, on those things sort of mentally. And, and she's really good at, uh, you know, kind of, I think everybody in the barbecue community is a good inspiration for chasing after your passion, mm -hmm. uh, doing something that you love. And so it was just a good reminder to kind of stop and uh, think about, those things and what I liked and what I love doing and, and figure out how to uh, put those two things together. And that's why this is so great because, and I've said probably that, I don't know, hundreds of times on this podcast was that most of the people that are involved in the barbecue world or in the food world weren't like, weren't third generation. Like they're not the kind of people that like there's, there's a group of people, a small group that have, you know, it's family, but a lot of people have pivoted from something or changed or just somehow had the the gumption to actually follow their passion and look where it puts it and that and we would not be talking if it wasn't for that shift that you had and did you were you making cutting boards at the beginning or were you doing more keepsake things that you referred to we were doing a, a lot of uh sort of more industrial and, and tech type uh jobs uh you know la laser etching uh, crazy computer boxes and uh, expensive uh, laptops. We we used to to work with Dell quite a bit because they're they're here in town, and so you know they would That's have us laser etch a uh, twenty five thousand dollar gold and leather laptop for <laughs> you know the Prince of Dubai or something like that. When you were deciding to 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 make the jump into barbecue, did you have to do something where you were doing stuff out your garage, or were you doing it? Did you rent a shop or, and did you buy a bunch more equipment? And I, I want to get to the point because right now you do stuff, you have a shop, right? Yeah. So we, uh, we actually, uh, got lucky enough to, to buy, uh, some land near Austin that, uh, has oh. space for a shop. And so, uh, it was kind of a, a good timing and a, a good pivot. Part of why we decided to move here was really because of that. And so, uh, so it's a mix. So we've got uh, a design uh, studio and, and space for the, the laser, but then I've also got uh, a wood shop as well. So it's a full, uh, we really kind of provide uh, a full on uh, CNC fabrication uh, for um, a lot of different things uh, besides just the, the boards kind of in, in the barbecue space. Yeah, because I've noticed that you have you do stuff with knives. Let's, yeah, let's, so let's, why don't we talk about what you offer and then we can kind of weave in the different things that you've sure. done for specific people. We actually offer, um, we offer just about anything. So if we have a customer that comes to us and says, you know, can you do this? Uh, we, we work with them and, and try to, to, uh, make it for them. So we, we essentially offer uh, a full range of, of different custom items, uh, including, uh, cutting boards, slicers, logo, art, wall, uh, you know, wall mounted, logos and artwork and we do a lot of work lately uh with uh, whiskey barrels so we do oh. uh, whiskey barrel tops for the walls and and bottle openers and um all sorts of just uh you know we 
do just about uh, anything in sort of that wood and metal uh, space. Uh, uh, holders for for folks uh, catering equipment and and all sorts of different things like that just uh, really anything to help promote um, their business so we really focus on uh, we work with a lot of breweries here in town which there are a lot of yeah. and uh, and then we work with barbecue folks uh, really all over um, all over the United States now yeah it seems like a lot of people have mentioned you from other places outside of Texas. Now, Whiskey Barrel, so you're, and it's, it's, you're etching on those, right? And, and can you, is there a certain depth that you can etch? Like, because it looks like on the Wanderlust one, it looks like it has depth, but, or is that just the, the shading? Is, or... Yeah, so that's the, the great thing about the equipment that we use. So, you know, and it's, it's a lot of the fun as well as that, uh, depending on what you're making, it can either be super high tech or it can be super, you know, handmade and, or in some cases it's, it's both. So it's handmade and then, uh, we put it on, uh, our CNC systems and actually, uh, put the logo, uh, into the metal or onto the wood and in the terms of the wood. Yeah, there, there's depth. So okay. there's, and on what we're doing, uh, it can be, you know, a really light uh, sort of edge on the logo, or sometimes we can we'll do it really deep and fill it with resin or uh, epoxy and um, that sort of thing. So it just kind of depends on what our what our end goal is. But our goal is just always to to create something for you know the person that owns that business to help uh, highlight and show off their their business. That's really kind of why we started making stuff for ourselves and our friends to begin with gotcha was to just help them kind of show off the things they were working on people might not know that i have like these lists i've created these crazy lists of like what knives people use what uh what uh, sharpening tools and then cutting boards and that's kind of what led to our discussion and do you build do you make cutting boards for people that don't have logos on them too or is it just more or is it more in that space where it's a promotional item so we uh we started out doing stuff just for folks that were already in the barbecue world and and i was shocked um i was shocked at how many people that have barbecue teams um you know i'd been to barbecue competitions and you know competed and hung out uh as well and you know it's just a it's such a super such a super serious business and so so, uh we we started having folks contact us, you know, from from teams saying, "Can you do stuff for us?" And we'd say, "Oh no, you you know, you have to have a logo." And they'd say, "Oh no, we have a logo." And so we would get some more serious uh, PR packages from folks that had barbecue teams than uh, you know professional pitmasters. Wow. So so we really started doing it for just about anybody, and um, so we we tried to uh, we definitely primarily work with folks uh in the industry but we work with enthusiasts and backyard folks and and people that just want uh fun stuff as well if i wanted to order just a cutting board without even a logo on it is that something people can do yeah you know a lot of the cutting boards we work with now we do make uh custom cutting boards a lot of the custom a lot of the cutting boards we sell uh now are actually uh prefabricated uh cutting boards because uh, in the barbecue industry, you know, usually unless you're talking about one of those amazing, uh, you know, butcher blocks that are out there that have been used forever, school, um, yeah. you know, like, yeah, the one Taylor or Lockhart or wherever, where, you know, you can just see yeah, the it's concave <laughs> up. Which is amazing. But, you know, for the most part, it's just sort of from a, sort of a health and safety or whatever perspective these days, you know, folks kind of tend to use some equipment until you know it's got some wear and then kind of move on so we were building our own cutting boards for the longest time and folks were you know just sort of beating the ever living you know what out of them (laughs) and so we started offering some other cutting boards as well that are a little more industry focused and so that's a lot of what we do is just putting uh logos for folks onto those cutting boards but then we do a lot of custom cutting boards for folks that want those as well the full full glue up build type uh, cutting boards gotcha so so most so you are so you can get them essentially either you can custom build them something or get them any type of cutting board that they need you can get a blank f- whatever style they want and then put, yeah. lo- put their logo put uh, design whatever that they want yeah we uh, we offer you know all that on our, our website for folks that are, are not barbecue uh people we definitely get a lot of those orders around christmas for folks wanting to 
buy fun stuff for their their barbecued loved ones and so we definitely do that for for anybody that just likes to cook in the backyard to somebody you know on the the top 50 that wants to to show off their they're cool stuff uh, at, uh, you know, TX Monthly or whatever. Well, let's just talk about some people that you've done work for so people can. And I'll put I'll put a list. I'll, I'm going to put a little uh, montage at the beginning of this interview with with, with images sure. of all the different. Because there's some really, really cool stuff that you've done. Who doesn't love a montage? Who uh, doesn't? Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not a fight montage. I wish it was like a fight montage. <laughs> We worked. Uh, we worked with a lot of folks. Uh, I was just looking through my Instagram. I've forgotten some of those. Uh, we worked with. I would say um, a big chunk of the the top fifty folks for sure. And let's just say I talked to one of when I did my lit was working on my crazy list. I had talked to Brett at Brett's Backyard Barbecue in Rockdale, and he mentioned you. He, uh, he has one of your boards, and he said everyone in Central Texas uses you. And of course, everyone's a large is <laughs> all it comes to the same word, but. So that, so Brett, you have one, Brett's for sure. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's a word of mouth thing. Um, and, you know, cooking at, at barbecue events and, and competitions and stuff, you run into um, a ton of folks. And, and that's really our, our main goal is, uh, you know, we just, we like being, we like cooking barbecue. We like being uh, involved in, in the barbecue family. And uh, it just kind of happens that, you know, we also, you know, make customized equipment for folks to use while they're doing that. And that's really sort of the secondary, you know, the business is almost sort of the the secondary uh, process or secondary part of that. Kind of like what I'm doing, essentially, because I'm doing this because I like the people and I love the food and the food is amazing, but also it's, it's the people and the, the camaraderie and kinship. And that's, and also, I like to. I, I want to meet people before I actually go come to visit them or come to visit Texas. So it's kind of nice to uh, to do this. So I I, had, I get that completely. Well, that, so that's so Posto Custom is it is it Posto Customs? Ah, uh, Customs. And PostoCustoms dot com. What's all the different ways to to contact you to see all your stuff? Folks can check out the the website at uh, PostoCustoms dot com. They can work Posto Customs on uh, on all the, the socials. So Instagram's got uh, a great uh, selection of uh, all the photos from uh, the, the different, some of the different things. I'm not always very good about taking photos, but I, I try sometimes, uh, but we rely on the kindness of, of folks that work with our, our products and buy the stuff from us to kind of show off, uh, the different things that they've been using from us. And so, you know, that's a, a lot of the fun for us is just to see people using that to show off what, they're uh what they're cooking so pop up in the wild without you knowing it that's kind of a Seeing them show up yeah i guess uh perez like the top of my feed is uh perez barbecue and i guess uh he cooks some some ribs on the uh, <laughs> or is gonna cook some ribs i don't know i guess they've got ribs uh on on uh on sunday as a special so <laughs> they're showing them off and, and that you know that's re- that's a real uh purpose not that uh not that people can't use it for whatever the heck they want to use it for but you know when you go to barbecue events or when you see barbecue photos uh it looks amazing right like we we see that we want to eat that brisket or Mm -hmm. want those ribs but you you know you don't know where they're at or you're 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 flipping through on that social media feed like so you kind of stop and reverse and see uh you know what is that that somebody's cooking or who is that (laughs) you know you see uh, the cutting board or the logo or the knife or, or whatever. And it just kind of helps. It kind of, kind of helps, um, show people, you know, who that belongs mm-hmm. to, who, who was the artisan that, that created that spent, uh, you know, 12 hours, 16 hours, uh, manning the pit to make that. So, exactly. you know, that way, yeah, that way, you know, you know, whose it is and where it came from. And it's not just sort of, uh, you know, a, a brisket sitting on a, a cutting board. And if people see a slicer, is it usually is it a Dexter slicer that you guys are mostly etching? Yeah. At? So if people uh, see you know, with, the, with people's logos, it's generally from you guys, right? Yeah, I think there's a few other folks maybe that are doing it now, which is is fine. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely not the first person to to you know use a, a laser etcher to to put anything on metal by far. But uh, I don't I don't know if we were the first uh, out there doing it or not. But let's say you are. Let's say we are. We'll pretend. <laughs> but yeah, we. Uh, I don't know who we did the first. I think somebody just asked for a slicer at some point. And so 
Uh, most of ours are, are 10 inch uh, Dexter serrated yeah. and, and I, I'm not normally like a, a big name dropper. It has nothing to do with them anyway. It's just, uh, no, I know, but, but, it, but it is like I went in doing my study on knives. Like I interviewed yeah. like 170 different places and Dexter came up the most. Like it's the yeah. Vic, yeah. Uh, Victor it's, Onyx, uh, Victor Inox or whatever that, that was a big yeah. one too, but it's, it's a, it's an affordable knife. It's really easy. No, I was going to laugh and say that I don't know that anybody was really, it would be an interesting conversation as well. Uh, I don't know if anybody was using the serrateds as much uh, before Aaron Franklin started. And then once he started telling people he was everybody, it just it just everybody switched from the scalloped to the serrated, and so uh, that's what we started selling. Uh, I know a lot of folks like to use uh, the twelve inch scallop, but you know, there's a if you're if you don't know what you're doing or you just kind of uh, want always get that perfect slice, that serrated just kind of does the job. I have that at my house. I'm not slicing a lot as many. Yeah, I'm not slicing as many briskets and I use it for other stuff, too. It's great. It's uh, it's great. It's great for anything. I like to reach for mine for, you know, watermelon or something and take a picture. I'm like, oh, I look at look, pull this off the smoker. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it's it, it's funny, too. And, and, and Aaron. Uh, when I wrote them about what what he uses, they sent me a link to his website. He sells his own knives on his. Uh, they're all Dexter knives, but they're uh, they're. I, th- I don't. I forget if they have his logo on it or something. But it's a way to go. Sell your own. So Leroy and Lewis is uh, selling the ones they use yeah. now with their logo. So everybody wants to take a little a little bit of uh, Central mm-hmm. Texas home with them. So yeah. it's a way do, to do it. Do you do their knives? Uh, we do. Yeah, we used to do the ones they use in the truck, and then they started selling. It's part been part of their pivot to you know kind of bolster up their store, and that's one of the things they've started uh, selling. And you guys etch them? That's yours. That's that's your. We do. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. I yeah, didn't we know do because I actually old... I put on my on my Chris. I did a Christmas list. So I've never I've done a oh, gift, nice. a gift guide, and I put their uh, scraper. Yeah. Dexter, uh, theirs are actually twelve inch serrated. So yeah, we do a lot of wholesale uh, for different folks that you know people see those a lot and uh, and want to buy it. You know at the store and. And that way, you know, when somebody asks that question, you can just point, point over and say, "Yeah, it's right there. Feel yeah. free to snag one." Ah, oh, that's cool. That's very cool. So, so then, what's your lead time on things? Uh, it depends. You know, if people want uh, one off, it's it's usually uh, pretty quick. We uh, <laughs> uh, uh, because I'm so great at promotion right now. The store is uh, essentially shut down still, <laughs> but uh, post post Christmas. So but, smart. Yeah, we'll turn it. Uh, we turned it off uh, on the. I think the 18th of December, just because uh, even when we tell people this isn't going to get to you by Christmas, they people buy it. And uh, yeah. I, I worry too much about how people feel and, you know, thinking that somebody's not going to get their their knife for Christmas uh, makes me feel feel bad. So we, we oh. turned the website. Off well, that's smart. It, this uh, year, uh, this year, nothing was moving in the mail system. Any, <laughs> anyways, I, I was tracking things and it was like sitting for uh, like two weeks and it, you know. I can't complain. There's and worse things in the world. Yeah. Customer service this year was rough. It yeah. was, uh, you know, you definitely felt bad for people. a lot of folks. But that's why we cut it off so early. Smart. And smart. so we kind of do the, the Christmas break thing and uh, take a little time to, to recoup and, and get restarted. But, yeah, folks can go onto the website, and, and we've got uh, some knives that we make out there that have stuff already on them that people can just buy. And uh, it started out as a joke with Matt Pittman and then uh, – it just people wanted to buy him. So every time he posts uh, our our goofy little knife that says vegetarian, we we get a whole bunch of people who would email us. So of course, I finally came in. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a, I'm not big on like the the puns uh, and whatnot, but uh, that's not a pun, I guess. But uh, uh, is it irony? Is it irony? Maybe. Yeah, I guess it's irony. Yeah. If it's so, it's, a, it's at least but, Alanis Morissette irony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slicing uh, slicing your brisket uh, on your wedding day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, exactly. Uh, but yeah, folks can uh, buy stuff on there. They can buy uh, something custom, okay. and and we'll we can help them with that too. So yeah, uh, lead times usually anywhere from uh, a week to ten days to oh, you know bad. it can be longer than that. If they want to get a cutting board from you with their logo on it probably can they get it within 30 days yeah yeah it's okay. definitely it's a, a few weeks usually they're they're beasts the the ones the brisket boards we usually sell are uh about 25 pounds and uh so they're and we make bigger ones uh we make some larger ones for brett 
you know, some of those are they're 30 by 30 by 24, something like that. And we, we usually don't ship those. They're, they're monsters, but anybody that's kind of close, we can definitely do some special stuff with, but we sell our, our regular standard sizes online that folks can get and get their logo in them or their name in them or get them plain whatever they want sure that 30 by 24 or whatever that size shipping to australia like they uh the guy the mail guys <laughs> or the ups or whomever dhl guys would hate you so much it's uh yeah and and uh so i've definitely had some large pickups from uh, usps before and the, the mail person just kind of gives you the side eye and you're like sorry <laughs> delivery but I've, I've had weird things delivered to my place too that i'm like i can't believe this was actually shipped like I've had some stuff Through like, you know, yeah, like things that like you have to build, maybe like, I don't know, Wayfair, Ikea, whatever it was. And I thought, oh yeah. my God, there's no way there's, this has been dropped so many times. There's no way that, <laughs> cause they probably push it out of the truck. It lands on the ground and then they drag it somehow. But anyways, well, was there anything else that people need to know, not need, not like essential, but want to know about what you do or what you offer? Cause I want to make sure that it covers everything because there's a lot of cool stuff and I'll put links and I'm going to put a companion blog post to this but is there sure. anything else is there any special things or things that are on the horizon that you're like some cool new things that you're working on um you know we're gonna roll out some more of uh of our, our barrel tops this year you know a lot of folks want uh, a way to display um you know display their logo and show off who they are and you know make sure folks know um kind of where they're eating and and um you know what they're what they're about and so that's kind of been something new that we worked on the last year. We did a, a special release version last year with uh, with Austin Beer Works and Interstellar. Okay. Wow. Um, at a, at a beer event that they did uh, together here in town, out at uh, Interstellar. And so, you know, a lot of times it's just it's not uh, the making of things; it's the logistics of how to get them to people that uh, is the harder aspect of that. So, if, yeah, if folks are looking. Uh, to kind of show off their barbecue, whether it be in the the backyard or the restaurant or at food events or, or whatever. That's kind of what we're here to, to help with. And if folks are looking for something, you know, beyond that, that uh, they want to do, that's where we definitely get a lot of our, our best ideas or collaborating with uh, with owners and pit masters to, you know, make something interesting. So pretty similar to, to doing a collaboration. If you have a creative or clever idea, come to you and, and shoot it by you and see what happens. And, and chances are you guys can come up with something rad and something really cool. Yeah. Just, uh, just like doing, uh, you know, a dinner collaboration. It's sort of the, the same thing, getting together to, to talk about what they need and hear what their wants and needs are and then figuring out how to, to help them uh, make something cool. You can do just about anything. Is that, that, um, Yeti cup that you have, is that, did you, or the, the drink that you've been What is it a Yeti or the, it's a, Oh, it's a, yeah, this one's a, a Yeti. I've got a bunch of different stuff. Um, can you etch on the, can you etch on those guys? We can, we did a lot of those for, a long time before uh before yeti got into the game themselves <laughs> um and so uh, it's you know i'm i'm a i'm a horrible business person uh i like to do what i like to do and um and for folks that are you know uh, experts uh in in a subject matter it's just better a lot of times to have them do that yeah. and so we definitely do some one-offs um with with yeti cups uh occasionally for people that need a, a small order or a special project but but yeti actually offers that now at such a reasonable rate it just you know it makes sense to to shoot folks their way um but yeah it's uh, definitely something that that we do this one has our logo on it yeah is it hard to do a, a rounded or curved surface no it's that's uh, really easy with the right equipment you just kind of throw that on there and so that was a, a big deal for a long time before everybody had 10 of those in their in their cabinet yeah. and so everybody still wants to give them out with uh custom stuff on them but oh that one's blank it's, <laughs> i'm horrible you're totally, the- totally, totally unprepared for this. I can't believe you. Like I, <laughs> I'm wearing a suit and tie to this. This is very professional. Uh, <laughs> well, well, thank you, Aaron, for taking the time. I really, it, you're such a great guy, and I. It's also too one of the reasons why I do this is it puts a face to a product or to a company or to a restaurant or whatever. And and so now people, if they're out, you know, out in the wild someday when. But everything, when everything, when people aren't wearing masks out in public, uh, they'll recognize you and 
I probably should do these with people with masks on right now, so that way people can kind of at least see, like, oh, okay, I can tell by the eyes and the eyebrows. That's who it is. But uh, it was it was very nice to meet you. I'm glad that we got this uh, this accomplishment.